In this video, we're talking about how to use tabular integration to evaluate an integral. And tabular integration is similar to integration by parts. It's just an alternate method. The tricky thing is that integration by parts, if it's applicable to a certain integral, it'll work every time. Tabular integration is a more specific case, and it doesn't work every time like integration by parts will. So you can't always use it, but where you can use it, oftentimes it can be a lot faster than integration by parts. So what I want to do here is take this integral. We have the integral of x squared e to the x dx, and we've been asked to use tabular integration to evaluate this integral. Now we could use traditional integration by parts, which is what I've done here. What I want to show you is how to use the tabular integration method to get to the exact same answer, and you'll see that we end up with the same answer. So before we get to tabular integration, let's review really quickly what we would do if we used integration by parts to evaluate this integral. First of all, we would notice that we have the product of two functions. So we have x squared multiplied by e to the x. So those are two separate functions. They're multiplied together. So this is a good candidate for integration by parts. And what we want to do first is identify u and dv inside of our integral. So in this case, we would set u equal to x squared, which means dv has to be everything else in the integral, which would be e to the x dx. So we say u is x squared, so dv is e to the x dx. Then we take the derivative of u to get du, so we would say du is equal to the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and we have that dx. And then we take the integral of dv to get v, so the integral of e to the x dx is just e to the x. Then we use this formula here, this is the integration by parts formula, it tells us that if we have the integral of u times dv, and remember we assigned u and dv to values in our integral, so we do have the integral of u times dv, when we have that integral it's equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So when we build our integral, this on the left hand side here is our original integral, on the right hand side is this right hand side of the integration by parts formula. So we take u times v or x squared times e to the x and we get x squared times e to the x minus the integral of v du from our formula. So we take v e to the x and du 2x dx and we put that inside our integral. But now we're at a point where we need to use integration by parts again to evaluate this integral. The remaining integral here is a little simpler than what we started with because instead of x squared, we have a first degree x variable, but we still have to use integration by parts a second time. So when we do that, we say u is 2x, so dv has to be everything else, e to the x dx. So we have u equals 2x, dv equals e to the x dx. We take the derivative of u and we get du is 2 times dx. We take the integral of dv and we get v is equal to e to the x. And then we use these values here and the right hand side of our integration by parts formula. We replace just this integral here. So we replace just this integral right here with the right hand side from our integration by parts formula. And that's where this comes in here because we left in our answer, we left the x squared e to the x right here, x squared e to the x. We left our minus sign, but then this integral gets replaced by the right-hand side of our integration by parts formula. So we have u times v, or 2x times e to the x, and then minus the integral of v times du. So v and du, we get 2 e to the x dx inside of our integral. Then we distribute this negative sign across these two terms, so we distribute the negative sign here and we distribute the negative sign here and we end up with a minus 2x e to the x and then this negative cancels with this negative we have a positive we pull that 2 out in front of the integral so we just have the integral of e to the x dx and then we just have to take this integral and the integral of e to the x is e to the x so we end up with this plus 2 times e to the x and we add c to account for our constant of integration so that's our final answer using integration by parts and it took us a little while and it was a little complicated. So this is a perfect candidate for tabular integration. You only want to use tabular integration whenever one of the functions inside of your integral, so in this case we have x squared and e to the x, when one of the functions, if you take its derivative over and over and over again, the derivative will eventually go to zero. And we can see that that would be the case with x squared. Because if we take the derivative of x squared, we get 2x. If we take the derivative again, we get 2. If we take the derivative again, we get 0. So the derivatives of x squared eventually go to 0, which means that we could probably use tabular integration to evaluate this integral. 
So the first thing we want to do in the same way that with integration by parts, we assign u and dv to values in our integral, the first thing we want to do is assign f of x and g of x to the functions inside of our integral. So essentially with tabular integration, instead of the integral of u dv, we're looking at the integral of f of x, g of x, dx. So what we want to do is figure out whether f of x is x squared or e to the x and then whether g of x is x squared or e to the x. You want to assign f of x to the function whose derivatives go to zero, which means we would say that f of x is going to be equal to x squared. That means the other function is going to be g of x. So we'll say g of x is equal to e to the x. And now from this point, the steps might seem a little foreign, but they're actually really simple. So we just write those functions right underneath these values here. We're going to create a little table. So for f of x, we're always going to take successive derivatives until we get to 0. So we're going to say the derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of 2x is 2, the derivative of 2 is 0. So we always take successive derivatives of f of x. We're going to take successive integrals of e to the x. So what we have here, we have e to the x. If we take the integral, we get e to the x. If we take the integral again, we get e to the x. If we take the integral again, we get e to the x. And we just drop this down all the way until we hit this last row here where we got 0 for f of x. Now we're going to do something a little strange. We're just going to take the value from the first row in the f of x column and we're going to, just with a line, connect it to the value in the second row in the g of x column. And then we're just going to draw parallel lines here. So this 2x is going to get connected to this value. The 2 is going to get connected to this value. And then we're done. When you hit that 0 term, you don't have to connect that to anything in the g of x column. So you just start with the value in the first row in the f of x column, and you connect to the next lowest value in the g of x column until you're done here. Then the last thing you do is you add signs to this f of x column and you always start with a positive sign and you alternate. So we're going to do a positive sign, a negative sign, and a positive sign and you want to keep doing that all the way down until you get here to zero. You don't have to assign a sign to zero just to the non-zero term. So you always start with positive and you just alternate positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative as long as it takes for you to get down to this zero value. And now this is actually all we need to do to get directly to our final answer because here's what we do. We start with this value in the first row for f of x and we just multiply it by the value it's connected to. So we say x squared times e to the x and the sign is positive. So in other words, positive x squared e to the x. So we start with positive x squared e to the x. Then we go to the next row. We have a negative 2x e to the x. So minus 2x e to the x. Then we have a positive, so plus 2 times e to the x. So plus 2 times e to the x. And then we can't forget to add our constant of integration, c. But that's our final answer. And if you notice here, this is exactly the same answer that we got when we used integration by parts. They match exactly. So tabular integration is going to work for you in place of integration by parts whenever you have one function inside of your integral whose derivatives go to 0. If that's the case, you can use tabular integration to find the correct answer and especially for a problem like this one where you have to use integration by parts multiple times to get to the answer tabular integration can sometimes be a lot faster